And what kinds of trends are you seeing from this surge in online buying? Well, John, we saw right through the entire pandemic as people recognized that the only way to transact with customers was online. Uh, those who already had a commerce presence saw a tremendous uptick, and those who didn't have a commerce presence uh, put a significant amount of urgency in creating that. Uh, the kinds of goods that were transacted first online had to do with essentials, but I think you're now starting to see every single good uh, being transacted online. And as you said, we expect that even before the holiday season starts, the amount of commerce that's transacted online is going to exceed all of that of 2019. So what does that mean for Adobe? Because, I mean, if you were transacting in person, there are certain things that you need to do, signage or stocking shelves, you have people doing that. The digital version of that involves your tools. So while I imagine some segments of your business have been hurt, as you talked about, uh, in earnings, others are, are thriving. How is that breaking down? Well, first, uh, John, when you look at all three of our businesses, uh, the creative business, the intention to create at home and everybody who has the story to tell, uh, we have seen a tremendous surge in people wanting to create content at home. Uh, and that applies to commerce as well, because everything that you want to transact online, you have to make sure that you express that appropriately. Uh, as it relates to the document business, being able to complete that transaction, being able to do a physical uh, signature and translate that now to digital signatures, we saw a tremendous uh, you know, influx in people wanting to do digital signatures. But really, the core of that business, as you know, is our digital experience business, where we help people with having a presence online, their dot-com presence, what they're doing in mobile apps, uh, being able to uh, take all of their uh, merchandise and make that online, being able to do predictions associated with it. So we've actually seen uh, tailwinds across all three of our businesses. I think initially you saw a little bit of advertising spend uh, that was impacted, but even now you're starting to see that go up as well. So overall, we're in a very fortunate position in that all three of our businesses are seeing tailwinds. Digital media is a big area for you guys. So I got to ask you, it's kind of adjacent, but I got to ask you about TikTok. Um, it, it's interesting to see how this social network, this app that's so reliant on media has become a big deal socially and it's become a big deal politically. W what is the meaning you think of where we are both geopolitically and artistically with an app like TikTok? Well, first let me start with the artistic uh, you know, aspect of that, John, which is, Everybody really has this inherent desire to tell their story. And what social media has allowed you to do is even if you weren't somebody who was well known, I think social medias like TikTok allows new kinds of influencers to be able to create their content. And with the algorithms that companies like TikTok have to make that front and center for new consumers. So being able to get your story out to a much broader set of consumers it used to be restricted uh, with other mediums uh, to either people who were your friends on social media uh, systems like Facebook or Instagram, but now that's really getting exploded. And so, uh, you know, we just continue to believe that with all the new media types, the devices on which people want to create, the devices on which people want to consume, and especially since people are at home, the amount of content that's being created is absolutely exploding. I think as it relates to the geopolitical, the emphasis that we're really hearing about is how do you make sure that there's privacy associated with the data uh, and where is that data stored? And so again, in that particular context, Adobe solutions are really being used to make sure that the person who is providing that data owns the data and that it's secure. So that's the way we look at it. Uh, as it relates to what happens to TikTok, your guess is probably as good as mine. Good morning, Shantanu. It's Deirdre. Uh, given what you just outlined, the artistic side of TikTok, the benefit that it brings to creators, I wonder if you'd give us your opinion on whether you think that Microsoft, if it were to buy TikTok, could continue the momentum that it's seen. Well, Deirdre, I think a lot of these uh, social media, uh, they tend to be, are you satisfying a particular consumer uh, need? and the consumer need to communicate, I think is going to continue to be viral and it's going to continue to explode. 
Uh, I'm not as privy to what those algorithms are, what the code is associated with it, and what might happen in a transaction. But I think this inherent and innate desire to communicate, I don't think we're seeing the end of that. Uh, mobile devices are not just uh, consumption devices, they're creation devices. And I think from the Adobe point of view, we look at the web, we look at mobile devices, we look at what's happening with styluses as just an incredible canvas for us to help people tell their story. And that's really what we're focused on.